One of the key improvements to Windows Phone 8 has been its hardware, and that's pretty crazy to think about because generally when you think of an OS upgrade, you're not thinking about having better hardware to go along with it. You're just looking at uh, a whole bunch of cool features like uh, new versions of Android and iOS usually boast, hey, we've got 200, 300, 5 gazillion new features. Uh, most of them you'll never even find. Now the thing about Windows Phone 8, or Windows Phone in general, I, I should rather say, is that Microsoft has restricted uh, the kinds of specs that uh, its phones are allowed to have. So, for example, the HTC Titan 2 uh, that we referenced earlier only has a WVGA screen. Now, for a 4.7 inch screen, that's, uh, that's not all that great. And you can definitely tell when you put it up against other 4.7 inch screens, let's say the HTC One X or the Galaxy S3, that both have 720p resolution. At least with Windows Phone 8, it's now uh, supporting multiple resolutions. Only three, but still it's much better because it's 720p and WXGA. Uh, so these two particular resolutions are now supported, and this means that you can look forward to a lot nicer experience in terms of uh, just viewing movies, photos, or like even your everyday web surfing or whatever. All of that is going to be better. Also, is going to be uh, it's also going to be faster because you have the multiple core support. Uh, of course, Microsoft only allowed single core processors in its Windows phones before, whereas now you can have uh, anywhere between two and well, 64. They're starting off small. Uh, Microsoft is allowing phones uh, to only have the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor. Uh, not a bad deal. It's a dual core processor. Um, so still quite efficient, quite fast, and much better than what it was doing before. We're not sure exactly when we're going to start seeing quad core or anything like that in Windows phones, but at least the support is there, and uh, chances are we're going to start seeing it uh, sometime in the near future. Now, the other thing, uh, there's a few other things actually. Uh, Micro SD support, uh, the uh, Windows Phone 8X here, unfortunately, doesn't have it. Um, must have been having to do something with uh, just the the beautiful sleek design that HTC came out with. Um, we're definitely fond of this design, by the way. But micro SD is certainly supported if uh, if companies want to take advantage of that and throw it in there. The last additional piece of hardware support to talk about is NFC, also known as near field communications. Typically, this is associated with mobile payments, where you stick your credit card information on your phone, and you go up to a payment station, and you can just tap your phone, and it magically makes the payment for you instead of having to dig your wallet out. So the thing is, NFC is so much more than that. There are plenty of other things that you can take advantage of. It's just a matter of whether or not Windows Phone 8 chooses to do that. Now, one of the new features uh, that's been added into the firmware is a wallet. Now, it's not a very original name, of course. Uh, we've seen Google's wallet. And it's actually very similar to that in terms of the mobile payment side. But there's also some elements of iOS Passbook in there as well. So, for example, you can have your AT&T account for app purchases, um, carrier billing, of course. You can also go in and throw in your own credit or debit card, gift cards, PayPal. Uh, you can even throw in uh, membership and loyalty cards uh, if you so desire. Another part of Wallet is the, the deals, where you can go in and uh, just be on the lookout for some awesome purchases. Now, I'm not much of a shopper myself, but man, $150 to spend on an outdoor sports team? Oh yes! Sold right there. So let's go in and you see uh, all the information, the terms, expiration. Uh, you can pin it to your start screen if you really want to keep a close eye on it. You can even have uh, reminders set so that way you don't miss out on the deal. So you've got that. It's, it's really not much to wallet at this point. The big thing is will third-party developers take advantage of it and uh, really utilize it to, to its full potential. This is kind of like Passbook in that sense, where uh, it really wouldn't take off without these extra apps and services coming in and uh, being able to utilize this service. Now another part of NFC is the sharing aspect. So whether it's pictures, music, videos, um, contact information, let's say we go in here 
And let's go into this made up phone number. I mean, it's real, call it, you'll enjoy it. Um, you go in, share contact. Okay, make sure you got the right information. And then it's a matter of going in, tap and send. Doesn't help when I press the wrong button. So we'll do that one more time. Tap and send. Now we're gonna bring in the Galaxy S3 here because that has the NFC capabilities. And there you go. So that's just, uh, th that's a few things that the NFC can take advantage of. And uh, certainly as the technology evolves and third party developers take advantage of it, we're gonna see a lot more capabilities come out of it. So it's something definitely to look forward to. Um, so another nice thing about Windows Phone 8 there. Of course, the thing is, Android also has NFC capability, whereas iOS does not. So, so there you have it. That's a brief synopsis of Windows Phone 8, some of the uh, user interface elements, as well as uh, some of the new features that you can look forward to. There are a lot more features, of course, uh, added into this. Uh, there's new Nokia Maps technology built into it, into all of the Windows Phone 8 devices, which means this HTC phone is actually using uh, Nokia mapping technology. Uh, so that's pretty interesting there. You can take advantage of the offline maps that uh, Nokia devices have been uh, known for for a very long time. So it uh, certainly makes it to be a nice improvement over the Bing maps that we had before. So that's, uh, of course, one of the other new capabilities. You also have iTunes syncing, so if you've been using iOS for the longest of times and you're just finally thinking maybe I want to go with something else, at least now with uh, Windows Phone 8, it's all built in. You just simply need to go and get the, the proper companion app on your, win your Windows PC or your Mac. It just depends on exactly what OS you're running. 